I'm standing in unprecedented um, territory right now. Live on Facebook and live on Insta and all sorts of places, etc., etc. Um, it's new. It's new for me. I just don't do it. So, hey. Um, and I'm going to talk about pitfall. Basically, and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is that someone asked me today, why did I start standing in my truth? And I've got a lot of that. I've always had a lot of that. Hey, Suzanne, how you doing? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't feel it. So 2020 has been a really weird year uh, for everybody, not just myself. And um, after interviewing um, a few people in the last couple of weeks, and after speaking to um, just people around me, um, I'm a, okay. Fair enough. I'm a musician. Fair, you know, we we we're, I guess musicians are acting like you know we're better, we're worse off than everybody else, but we're not. Do you know what I'm saying? Hey, Catherine, how you doing? Hey, hey, Gunnar, how you doing, babe? Um, and we're not better than anybody else. But I would like to think that people who have lost their jobs and stuff like that, they've had to find, hi Catherine, big love, big love, big love, big love. They've had to find um, other avenues and work to do. And one of the major questions that was asked of me yesterday and today is why did I start a podcast show um, saying, oh, um, thank you, Gunna. I appreciate that, which is what I was talking about, you know. Um, why well, start the podcast show? So not try not to be detracted. Growing up, I didn't think I was going to be a singer. Growing up, I did not think that I was going to sing. Growing up, the only thing I wanted to do was play football. I wanted to be a football ref. I just wanted to be a football referee, even before they said the Premier League had started, you know. And, but it didn't work out like that. Then I went to drama school, you know, yeah, you can see that's why I'm dramatic, right? <laughs> then I went to drama school, but then I still didn't. And everything that's happened to me, um, it's always that I fell into it. I didn't sort of say, you know, um, oh, I am gonna be this and I'm gonna be that. I actually just fell into it. Um, but I knew that from an early age, my grandmother, God rest her soul, she's been dead three years on Thursday. I knew, because we grew up in church, you know what we black people are like, you know. Um, it's just that you've got a staunch Christian family, you've got to go to church on a Sunday, boom, boom, boom. And by the age of eight, I am singing in the church choir. And the next thing you know, I'm going to be a prodigy. And... God knows what prodigy means, because, you know, when you're growing up, you just listen to what everybody else tells you, right? So, there I am. Now, I did, as I said, I didn't mean to go live to go on about my life history. <laughs> I'm just giving you a brief synopsis. But COVID has, um, has taught me um, of trying to do things differently that I've never done before, walking to the territory that is so unknown, and doesn't mean that oh because I've been on the stage I know what I'm doing because I've been on the stage doesn't mean that I know that I'm not scared of an audience or anything like that because that is so far from it what I do know is that I'm passionate and so whether I'm passionate about singing whether I'm passionate about um, uh, uh, music or whether I'm passionate about what you know a program I'm passionate about bloody Donald bloody blinking Trump um, I'm passionate and sometimes my passion can overtake me and I can become quite pedantic and for whatever reason. Today, I I always thought that if I'm going to do something, I want to do it to my best capability. I'm going to learn how to do it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to st study and put my best foot forward. Um, so I'm opening up myself to everybody here today and it's not easy, but I'm going to do it anyway because I have nothing to lose. I've only got one life to live and I'm not here. Hey, Seymour. Uh, hi, David. How you doing? Uh, I've got nothing to lose. So 
and I'm not here to do airs and graces. I'm not going to put on false eyelashes. I'm not going to put on a, a outfit with my boobies hanging out. It's just I'm going to stand in my truth and I'm going to keep it real. Two things. I decided to start the stand up in my truth because I told you I've got a lot to say and I feel that there's an avenue for it. And um, Dags Nelson, Darren Nelson, when I was doing up my house, Darren Nelson came and helped me to get rid of some of the stuff and he's called Dags the Statement. Proper geezer, let me tell you, proper. You know, right? you're right, DJ Sizzle. And he came into my house and he said to me, boy, Val, your room looks really nice. It's not the room that I'm in at the moment. <laughs> but I was doing it all up and he just turned and he said to me, um, you know, sometimes you put a quote up here and there and it's really positive. Is that how you're thinking? Is that where you're coming from? Is that how you feel? And I said, nine times out of 10 is how I feel. But I think when I do post, I'm, I'm thinking about everybody else. And it's not what I'm actually going through. It's I try to look through the eyes of me to somebody else and wonder if I post that, I wonder if it's gonna make a difference to somebody. And, and that's a lot, to be honest with you, that's a lot to be taking on because nobody's asking me to do it. Really and truly, no one's asking me to do anything. No one, pff, who the hell am I? I'm just, I am just a normal human being. And I'm not an influencer, I'm not anything like that. I'm a smart ass at the best of times, do you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, tomorrow. I'm a smart ass. I'm a smart ass. Simple as that. Anyway, um, and he came and he just said to me, "Look, I, you know, use your platform and think of the things that you talk about. Think of the people that you connect with, and see what you can come about." And I was going to call it, you know, in my boudoir, but then I didn't really want everyone inside my bedroom. <laughs> The last thing I wanted was people inside my bedroom, inside my boudoir. So I decided, no, I had this plan and I thought, yeah, we're going to, I learned how to go on Restream, which is what I'm on now. I go on Facebook Live. And, and don't get me wrong when I say this to anybody that's watching, right? I am not a liked person and I'm not looking for anybody's, um, oh, what's the word, um, validation. I've learned to accept that. I really couldn't give an effing shit. Um, but it, it did make me scared to do a podcast show, any show come to think of it. Because when you're in a band, you, you're you protected. You're actually protected. I don't have to worry about um, people's opinions or what anyone's got to say. I'm protected by that whole be with my bandmates and stuff like that. And this, this is for every other singer, I think, or artist or rapper or, you know, like that, that, you know, they wear their hearts on their sleeve. And if you attack their personality, of course, they're going to feel a personal about it. You know, of course, you've got to, you've got to, you've got, you've got to have something here. The thing is, if you've got a bad character, it shows. If you, if you're not real, your fakeness comes through. And there's a lot of fake ass people out there. Let me just tell you that for nothing. But I guess in the industry of being creative, either you, whether you're an actor or a writer, you know, you've got to have some honesty. And if there's no honesty, your fakeness shines through straight up and down. There's no two ways about it. Or like something else I was speaking to about earlier on today, you'll find that you know, footballers, you know, at the end of the day, they have a haircut, they might decide to dye their hair, they might have a different pair of boots. But because they decide to be a different individual, because they decide to, I want to colour my hair brown or, or purple or yellow or red, they're a flash freaking git, you know. Because you have locks in your hair does not mean you're a flash git, doesn't mean I want to have a new short back and sides because I want to have a different color, does not exempt me from anybody else. It just gives you your own uniqueness. So I started standing in my truth because I just wanted somewhere that I can bring my friends in and talk. Bring my people that I've met along the way, I've listened to their journey, I've listened to their stories, and I felt that if I could listen, someone else could listen. I felt that there's children out there, people committing suicide, 
and how come nobody knows why do we not see the signs but one of the main things I wanted to do standing in my truth was to have fun because I am a fun person I like to have fun Covid has stripped me of a lot of my um why am I welling up? I always do this when I come on bloody live TV. COVID has found a way to strip my, some of my integrity, you know? But at the end of the day, you have to fight back, fight back. So anyway, so I've started the Standing In My Truth and I've had knockbacks. So I decided to up my game rather than just use Restream and have backdrops and um, I've tried to learn about OBS and everything else. And I don't know if there's anybody else out there who runs their own Zoom shows or their own um, OBS. It is difficult or is it StreamYard? It is really, really difficult to use these little programs. And it's good if you can find someone that you can tap into who can set it all up for you or you do it yourself. Valerie thought, yeah, I can do this. I can do this by myself. So I'm going to do this all by myself. Turns out I couldn't. And I had to call upon my brother, who's been absolutely amazing. And I called on DJ Lynch that does Rise One Radio. And I literally got everything set up. Tickety bloody boo. Three nights on the trot. I ain't slept. Trust me. You know, I haven't slept. I'm knackered. But... I stuck with the program and I put everything together. So for the first time, I had a multi, a, mo a platform of everyone last night from the freestyle. So that was my first music show that I decided to put up. And lo and behold, it looked all right from my end. But when it went out to everybody else, it was bouncing back and it just. So this is what I had to contend with. I had to contend with that with being scared to face the public. I had to contend with I wanted it to be perfect. I had to contend with that my subject matter and the people that I'm dealing with were going to behave their freaking self when they came on board. I had to contend with um, who's going to join me and who's not going to join me. And I certainly had to contend with knowing that, holy shit, this might go monumentally wrong. So it went wrong. Because even though we had a great chat, chat and everything else, when I played it all back, it just was all over the place. And I went to my bed feeling like effing shit. And I was thinking, God, you've put in all these hours and it's come out shit. Anyway, but the, the, the show, show was good, but the feedback, the playback weren't that great. Come this morning, I've got up. I knew that I had the Saturday show. Put everything together. Everything seems really good. Lo and behold, on my end, everything looked bloody great. I mean, it just looks superb. But when I did the recording and so now I'm gonna to have to do this again the moral of my story why I've come live is this I could easily have given up I could easily 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 have given up I could have chosen to just do a music show I could have chosen to just do play music and be like all the other DJs and not give a flying shit do you know what I mean but I chose to go live. I could pre-record, but I chose to go live. And it's, I'm sitting in, I'm blaming myself and I shouldn't, but I was, I wanted the pitfalls for other people who want to do the same thing is, there's not every day that everything is gonna be great. You're gonna fall down, you've gotta get up. If things aren't working, get up. As I said, I am mad at myself right now. It's all good. Hey, I've got this eye injury and it's just still not getting any better. And sometimes I, the, the, the light hits it and it's really bad. Anyway, and you really, really want to do well, but you're scared what the general public is going to say. You're scared that no one's going to like you. As I said, for me, I found it easier because I, hey, Chi, I find it, found it easier to go on live because. I know no one likes me, right? Try no, and I'm as I said, I'm not looking any validation. I already know people don't like me. When you come from where I come from, and think, uh, mate, the worst thing is when you have people that are around you that you expect them to get, you know, to support you because you're happy to support them. 
and they don't. But if that ever happens to you, don't be disappointed. Please don't be disappointed. Do you know what I mean? You just need to plug in your laptop, plug in your show, play your music, play your, your you know, do your standing your truth, your show if you're going to talk about makeup, whatever it is. Even if you've only got one viewer, two viewer, and no viewer whatsoever, stick with what you're doing. Because you may never know who will pick this up. You'll never, ever, ever know that one person's life that you're ever going to touch. So when I finished the show yesterday and I knew that this show was just not coming out right, and I knew that my detractors were already out there laughing at me, I went and uh, I went online and I got Uber Eat and I ordered like five bags of sweets and then do you know what I mean and then I ordered like I don't drink eat sweets and I don't even drink soft drinks but because I knew I couldn't have alcohol I ordered <laughs> I ordered all these bags of sweets at 10 30 and I ordered all this soft drinks and I guzzled it it was just like but this morning I feel like shit for doing it but that was just me feeling sorry for myself but me feeling sorry for myself made me stand up this morning and say, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. So to the person who told me I'm shit, to the person who's messaged and said I'm rubbish, to the person who's gonna, or who's gonna laugh at me, I don't care. So I decided to come on and if you are watching, I'm letting you know, I don't care because I'm in COVID and COVID has allowed me to buy all the equipment that I have around me and allowed me to go live. And as I said, I hope that what I talk about today will inspire a whole host of other people who want people to hear music or want people to talk about mental health awareness, talk about suicide, um, how are you coping through the second part of lockdown, um, Navi, Wagwa, brother, <laughs> Navigator, Mr. Navigator, you know what I mean, that's my family right there, you know what I mean, yes, I know the next show will be spectacular, so that's inspirational, so my guy's telling me that the next show is going to be spectacular, I feel it, I hear that, but I have a lot of people asking to come on the show. If I haven't invited you on yet, it's just that it's all about scheduling. It's got nothing to do that I'm picking and choosing who comes on. But I decided that standing in my truth and I'm rocking is why I decided to do that today. Yeah. And I truly hope that you keep sending me, keep sending me that you're shit. Send me the notes and telling me that, yes, brother, I get it. Yeah, Chi, trust me, things are said about me all the time and lots of people's laughing at me too. Just, that's what I'm saying. It's made me stronger, you know. I've got my Instagram live going as well as I've got down here. I've got my restream going. But um, it really did make me stronger. And I, I get it, you know, big up. And it takes a lot for me to even come on here because I'm not trying to ask for anybody's validation. But what I am going to say is this. While you're there procrastinating on, on, on me or any other person that are trying to put things out there, positive things out there, spare a thought for them that are taking their energy and their time to entertain you. Talking about mental, you know, suicide and, and, and mental awareness is not an easy thing to do. Especially if someone who's never experienced it but wants to speak to someone about it or someone who does go through all of that, it is not an easy thing or place to be. So I'm going to bring it to an end. It wasn't, I wasn't here to be going on all day. Uh, it's a shame that I don't have anyone to join me if they wanted to have the conversation. But to anyone that's using OBS and learning how to restream their show through that, I've had issues. If someone out there want to show me how to do better, then hit me up, then that's not a problem. But try and know this, I am going to get this right. 
and I'm going to keep talking to people. There's anybody that wants to reach out to me and speak about COVID, how it's affected them, and what have they done to make things better? What's the new learning skills have you found? Hey, hard Harry in America. Hey, trust me, I do take it to your shows, um, Harry. I do. And your daughter's amazing, brother. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, if you have anything that you want to say, you know, talk about the latest tunes that are coming out, things like that, then hit me up. We can have this conversation. That's what this is all about. You know, there is no place for negativity right now. So I wanted to let the person who was telling me that, you know, whatever you think I am, whatever it is, I know this, I hear it all the time. I walk in a, in a, in a particular part of a black community that cannot stand the ground that I walk on, but yet still they've never walked in my shoes. Never walked in my shoes. So thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for putting up with me. And when the show, sports shows come on, I'm hoping that it will do better. I'm going to have to re-record my show that I had on earlier on this day today because I had a bit of a technical glitch issue. I've now learnt what the issue is. So I'm going to do the show again tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning. So whoever wants to join me, please join me. I have a host of people, as I said, to come on in a few weeks' time. But I'm, I want to leave on a positive note because, I, as I said, I don't do this Instagram live, which is love my folks love the people that i know i'm hoping that you're all staying safe i'm hoping that any show that we put out you can take something out of it and stay positive it's all about good positive energy try please stop tearing each other down don't be watching what someone else is doing and feel that you need to tear them down it takes a lot for them to do that it really does take a lot and if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing. Blood clot, ras clot, atal. Sorry, I had to break out in Jamaican. I had to. Don't say nothing. Keep your negative thoughts to yourself. And if the negativity, if you can put that negativity across, but in a constructive way, that that person can take it constructively, then by all means do that. Yes, Crystal, I got you. Yeah, let's do that. But in the meantime, have the most amazing, amazing Saturday weekend in lockdown. It's not easy. I'm going to sign out of my Instagram live. Boom. And I'm going to sign out from here. Have an amazing day, folks. But as I said, keep your negativity. I don't mind. I don't mind constructive criticism. And remember this. I know I not light. So when you're coming at me, come with something that I know already. But you're not going to stop me from standing in my truth on social media. It's a platform to spread positivity. Nothing else. Not trying to put myself forward for any show. Stay good. Standing in my truth. Bye.